I'm Richard Gertain, Production Manager for the Utah Shakespeare Festival, and this is part two of Anatomy of the Stage. Today we're going to talk about the Proscenium Theater. Uh, we're in the Randall L. Jones Theater, built in 1989 here for the festival, and this type of theater may seem more familiar to you if you've ever been to a Broadway show or you've gone to um, one of your coliseums or, or uh, event centers in your hometown. Um, this is probably the most uh, recognizable type of theater. Um, now, a proscenium really is talking about one particular element within the theater itself. And that's this area that I'm standing right in the middle of. It's called a proscenium arch. Sometimes it's an arch. Sometimes it's just an opening. Sometimes it's, well, the idea behind it really is to create a fourth wall. What it does is it's a type of separation between the audience and the action on the stage. Um, in this theater, uh, it's basically an arch, um, and it creates that idea of like when you're watching TV. It gives you this sense of I'm watching action happen on stage, and I'm sort of in a different place as an audience member. To sort of get us in the right spot and understand where we are, the basics of communication on stage, and we talked about this in the last module, is stage directions. So right now I'm standing on the main stage, and to my left is stage left. To my right is stage right. In front of me is downstage. Behind me is upstage. All stage directions are based on your perspective as the person on stage. To review, stage left, stage right, downstage, upstage. Uh, the first time we really saw a proscenium theater in history, like as we think of it today, was around the 1880s. Um, and it's kind of evolved over time. Um, so there are lots of different things that sort of influenced it. But really, this idea of the audience relationship is, is, is what defined it. Now, one of the things that muddies that water and over time it adjusted um, was this area directly in front of you. We call it an apron here, or sometimes called a modified thrust. Uh, what it does, because some of the things we found over time, is that uh, the audience relationship was very distant. We, sometimes the actors and the audience felt disconnected from one another. So by creating this area that's a little bit out more into the house, into the area where the audience is sitting, and a little bit away from the proscenium, we actually had the opportunity to connect more fully with the audience. Inside the proscenium arch, there are a couple items that are unique to this space that I just want to point out. You'll see there are some doors we have, stage left and stage right. We use those as entrances. They're hidden in some places. Um, <clears throat> they may be ornate, but for us, those are hidden inside the proscenium. <clears throat> Directly above them, um, we have lighting positions. The big thing about modern theater is it gives us an opportunity um, to use modern technology to sort of help tell the story, set the stage. So we have box booms on our stage left and stage right. Kind of call them box booms, a lot to do with box seats, which we'll get to when we flip around and we talk a little bit about the audience. What you're going to notice here right now is that there's a lot of things set up on the stage. I just want to let you know we are actually set up for rehearsal here for a socially distanced uh, rehearsal. Um, as you know, we're in the middle of trying to uh, still find ways to produce, so our theater arts and dance uh, friends at Southern Utah University are trying to rehearse a bunch of do about nothing. And they've spaced themselves out so they can still rehearse, still communicate and be in the same room, but wear masks and socially distance. So as I move around these, that's what's going on here. Um, directly under my feet, um, you will see that there, you may see that there's a bit of an outline of a, a little crack. This is a trap door. Just like we saw in the Engelstad space, the trap door allows us the opportunity to have people enter from below. Below this opening, below this door, there's a trap room. Um, the trap room is where people enter and exit. It's an entire area down there that we can access and use to magically bring people in and out of the space. So from on stage, you can tell that we have a lot of different things back here that the audience doesn't usually get to see. Behind me, towards stage left, you'll see a lot of vertical ropes. That's called the fly rail. So the fly rail's job uh, is it's, it's a piece of machinery, each one an independent system, that allows someone to pull on a rope and then allow a thing over stage to fly in and out. Now a lot of rigging in a proscenium theater, we call it rigging, is based on sailing ships. So the principle of being able to have an item of some weight on one side 
and then the ability to move it from pulling a rope on the other side. A lot of those things came from the way we move sails on a ship, on a sailing ship, or how we move the booms and battens. A lot of the terminology is actually very similar. Um, this is a counterweight rigging system, meaning we put whatever the item is that weighs, say, 100 pounds on stage, we put that much weight off stage and balance it. If they're not in balance, they move in ways we don't want them to. So we always try to get the item that is over stage in balance with the items that off stage. Our run crew, our stage hands, they operate that equipment to allow us to change scenes and locations, um, to give us different uh, lighting effects, to bring things in and out, even to the point where sometimes we may fly, fly a person uh, for, say, uh, Peter Pan. And we need you know, Peter Pan to fly through the air. We're going to counterweight that person and move them around. If you look above you, you'll see that these are the loads, or these are the items that are counterweighted by the fly system. There are a series of uh, pipes called battens. Those battens are usually made of metal. They can hang a lot of different things off those. We use them for curtains, like masking, which helps us not see parts of the theater we don't want to. We want to hide those from folks. They can have scenic elements on them, such as drops, which are giant painted pieces of fabric or canvas um, that give us different scenes. We also put our lighting instruments and our um, speaker systems on top of those. So other equipment that helps support creating the stage. Um, if we turn around, we can look to stage right. And we see one of the most important elements of any theater, and that is the load-in door. So when we create scenery and props and other items, we actually need to have a place to bring those things in and out of. So we have a large opening that's off the stage. We have a large door that goes to outside to a loading dock where we can pull a truck in and bring things in. But this allows us to fluidly move things in and out of the space. Uh, that way, we aren't building items on stage. We're saving this for the area that the theater uh, we perform in. And we do our work in construction in another location. We do a nice big sweep around the stage. You'll see there's a lot of area that's not really on the stage. There's a nice end paint line here. All this area that's not painted black is our storage area. So in a repertory company, an area where we do rotating rep, which is the Utah Shakespeare Festival does true rotating rep, where every day a new show, and sometimes twice a day, a new show is put on our stage, you have to have a place to put the other show. So this area upstage, which uh, is our storage area, some people call them barns, um, we just call it our storage area, I believe. And uh, this is a place where we can put those other sets, sometimes one or two, depending if we're doing up to three shows in this theater uh, in a given season. We have a spot for two other shows while our third show is playing for our audience. And here we are turned around. So now I'm in the audience. Um, as we talked about before, we discussed stage directions, which were upstage, downstage, stage left, stage right. Those are based on the perspective of someone on stage. Sometimes people are going to communicate with slightly different instructions based on being in the house. Director, designer, choreographer, you're communicating to your, your fellow collaborators. You may use house-based directions. Same idea, I'm sitting in the house, house left, house right. But house right can also be stage left. So depending on who you're communicating with or where they're standing, you may want to give them those directions based on the perspective that they have. In addition, I wanted to point out that we are here at the orchestra level. Again, we talked about that in the Ingolstadt orchestra level, these, these seats closest to the stage and down on the ground. Um, you'll notice there are two large uh, fenced off areas, house left and house right. Um, that kind of walk down into the under part of the stage, down into the trap rooms. These are called bombs. No, bombs aren't about a place that you go to relieve yourself. Bombs were actually entrances or exits under a seating unit in a Roman theater in a Colosseum. So we borrow that term, vomitorium. We short for bomb, uh, stage left, stage right. And these are great ways to get up and down off stage and bring the action in through the audience. Like we discussed a little before, trying to create a more intimate uh, interaction between uh, our audience and our performers. 
Um, the area directly in front of the stage, we sometimes refer to as the moat. Um, that's a place just off the stage edge that allows us to, again, move back and forth, be a little closer to our uh, audience members, and, uh, and also still create a little separation when we're rolling. In the back of our, uh, the back of our orchestra level, um, you'll see big glass windows. Those are our control booths. There's one for our uh, lighting operator, sound operator, and our stage manager. So we have to have individuals who are operating consoles, who are uh, operating you know, boards to make lights change and make sound cues go. Or when we're doing a musical, it actually someone would be in our house at the orchestra level to change the levels on people's microphones and balance all of that sound together to make a great uh, sound picture. Um, and then our stage manager who runs the show, the person who is calling the cues, when do we change the lights, when do we change the sound, and also cueing our actors, telling the actors when to enter or when to exit or when to make a scene change happen. So they have a view in front and are able to see things uh, very clearly. If you look up to our next level, this lovely gold front to our balcony, that's our balcony level. Um, box seats on house left and house right. Um, and all the way in the back here, uh, that balcony allows for seating, but also, as you move up, you'll see all the way up in the back, our spot cove. There's some big pieces of equipment up there, if you can tell what they are, there's some, there are spotlights. That's where our spotlight operators sit, you can view the full, uh, size of the stage and can manually pick up different actors, dancers, singers uh, with the spotlights to highlight them as part of the design. As you move closer to the stage, towards the proscenium, uh, each one of these little cuts, each one of these little separations between the ceiling panels are lighting positions. Sometimes referred to as lighting coves or front of house lighting position. Each one of them has a slightly different angle um, allows us to reach a different part of the stage, but also allows us to create a unique angle uh, to create unique pictures with that information. 